Hello, this is Isaac from Turn Sounds. If you want to stand out in public, do a cartwheel. Welcome to Just Keep Walking. This is a podcast focused on the Walking Dead TV show. Today we're talking about season 11, episode 11. Is that right? And I don't even know. Rogue element. Rogue element. All right, there we go. (laughs) Wow, this is going to set the bar for the whole episode. Yeah, it really is. (laughs) I'm your host, Ben, and joined by my good friend, Isaac. Hello. And we don't have Liam today. He's a bit sick, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have him back on his feet next week but um so he can keep walking yeah oh yeah good one (laughs) um so basically yeah spoiler alert for this episode all episodes uh up to this point and we're just gonna get straight into it um yeah what overall thoughts (laughs) boring (laughs) look i try to see the best in this show and i think I'm a lot more lenient, like we've spoken in the past. I'm a lot more lenient about all of his shortcomings. Sure. I think it's just a TV show to me. Yeah. Um, I will definitely acknowledge all the high points that it reaches in the show in general. Mm. Um, but yeah, this one, I'm I, I'm glad they wrapped up the whole Stephanie arc in this one episode and didn't mm. have it span multiple. Um, but boy, yeah, I don't really care about anything. <laughs> the fishing village... Yeah. Or the, or the opium village or whatever. And the. Yeah. How'd, yeah. You, how'd you like it? No, well, well said with. Uh, yeah, good to just. I don't know. Get the yeah. Stephanie thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just very hard to care <laughs> anymore, really, about any of it. Um, it's. Uh, it, I mean, the definition of filler in yeah. every sense, oh, really. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, all, all I can say is. Uh, I mentioned to you right at the end, the promo for next week looks more interesting at mm. least. Like that looks like the actual story that we're following. Like, you know, okay, what's the Commonwealth all about? What do they actually have to offer? And what does that mean for the main characters and stuff? Like, but yeah, this, it, I, I think a big part of it is just being thrown into the deep end with like no context. Like mm. we're kind of, Apparently, this is a month after the last episode based on one of the lines that was said. Yeah. And, like, we don't even really know how big the Commonwealth actually is. Like, this episode kind of tells us, but it expects us to already know. And it's like... And is this in the midst of all of, like, the anarchy going on or the resistance building up and all of that as well? Like, was that beforehand? I don't know. Yeah, like, it could be anywhere in time. (laughs) Is it important, though? Because we're we're really just supposed to be focusing on Eugene Mm. and Stephanie Mm. or whatever her name is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I forgot already. (laughs) Traitor. Um, (laughs) Spoilers ahead. But yeah, so maybe in the context of this particular thing, it doesn't really matter where they are Yeah. in the timeline. Probably not. One thing I will mention, so I never wanted to see Eugene in his undies. <laughs> um, that's what we got right at the start here. If you look at a more a, a much deeper level, um, so, sort of as far as like relationships go, when you start to get a lot more comfortable around each other, you know, you don't really care mm. how presentable you are all the yeah. time. So the fact that he's, you know, in some you know, New York roast or whatever it is, can, can, you know, Kansas City world's best <laughs> barbecue um, yeah. and his undies and stuff. Like, clearly, they've progressed along, which makes it all the worse when you find yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I don't know. The, the, actually, let's just come back to it. But I, just so I want to say overall, like, um, the, for me at least, easily, like, the worst episode of the whole show, not even a question wow. for me. The, um, the whole show? Yeah. <laughs> you held that in very well. I don't know. <laughs> um, and But, like, based from last week, I was like, okay, you know, I'm not loving the Commonwealth, but let's just try and enjoy it. And so, you know, I was trying to come in optimistic here. And I, there, was, there was definitely some things to enjoy, but it just it just feels like the writers, even the Eugene, like when he was saying some of the dialogue in like the detective uh, scene, yeah. it just seemed like he was like, what am I saying? What's this script? It's so weird. Like yeah. it, the whole thing, this whole episode literally felt like an SNL skit to me. Like they just took yeah. the actors <laughs> and put them in some completely different show yeah. just for like, just for a laugh or something. Like, if you put insert canned laughter underneath it, yeah, it, it would work. <laughs> And like the whole stylized detective thing, like I I, I kind of get 
I get it, but like if you had done it in some sort of context at least or built up to it, but like just imagine the, watching the first season of the show and then someone showed you this and told you it was the same show. You you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> like Mm-mm. it's just nuts. Some spin off or whatever. Yeah. As far as Eugene's character goes, like this type of like someone he cares about goes missing, someone he deeply cares about goes missing, mm. and he falls into this like alcoholic state of like, you know, <laughs> turning over every bit of information there is, pinning mm. it all up on the board and like, mm. that makes sense as far as his character goes. Yeah. And I talk about this all the time. Just because something makes sense, it doesn't mean that it's the right fit for the story. Right, yeah. It doesn't okay. mean that it's fun to watch. I mean, it is a novelty, uh, the whole, like, noir mm. detective, you know. Yeah. The, I've got so many notes here about, <laughs> yeah. like, the whole thing. I hope you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, that, that's the right word. Yeah, noir. Yeah, I was trying to find the right word for it. <laughs> like, all the darker shots and, like, the, the mm. flashbacks that he's recalling these things. And <laughs> even the music is like... Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. And I just... Yeah. It's it, it's a novelty. That's really what it is. And yeah. I think... At one and in a, like, in a novelty episode, if this was one of the bonus episodes, it would be like, okay, whatever, mm. they're just having a bit of a fun. Or if this was like Tales of the Walking Dead, a spin-off show, and they're just, you know, trying some different ideas, sure, go for it. But like, as a, like when the opening title theme comes in, it's like, this, this can't be the same show. It just feels so out of place. Because mm. you have the transition as well. You know, they get up and she's, they say, I love you to one another. Big notes on that one. Red mm. flags straight away. I <laughs> I caught it, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. But he's sitting there with his ice creams and then all of a sudden cut to a shot of them melted all over his hands. And now all of a sudden, like, you take 25% saturation out of the <laughs> shot and now we're in our detective state and everything. Yeah. It's such a weird fit for the show. Mm. And there's, in, like, last season, remember, there was the episode where Carol was, like, hallucinating heaps because she was on the pills and hadn't slept in three days or something. Mm. And there was all these weird things you'd see in the episode, like there was a clock without hands and they're just strange things and you went, like, oh, that's kind of weird. And then later it all makes sense because she was just dreaming or hallucinating. It's like, okay. Half this episode literally felt like that for me. The the flashback, like you said, when he's drunk and then all these things happening. It's like, is this just like a, a dream sequence or something and it's mm. going to like snap out of it? Or, mm. But no, it's, it's all... <laughs> yeah. It's because on the one hand, we're so happy to finally see Eugene break right out of his shell and be happy sure. with someone. And so it's like, of course he wants to put all of this effort into finding. And as, mm. as soon as he, he suspects that it's some kind of cover-up, you know, then, yeah. oh boy, like that's now we're really getting into it. Yeah. Getting Princess involved, you know, mm. she's fun to see on screen, but if the whole thing is just weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say even more weird than that is the... The whole newspaper thing with Connie and Kelly, Kelly being journalists. Yeah. Like, and that's one of the things where it, it makes you say, how big is this place? Like that, like they're making a big deal out of like journalism and a newspaper. Like we've literally seen like what one street and a building. Like we get the idea it's a big community, but like if, if you're spending, you know, a third of an episode focused on like journalism for some newspaper, <laughs> what's going on? I don't know. One of my notes here is Connie is so expressive with her face. Mm. Some of the facial expressions she does when she's looking at someone going, <laughs> no, no, I don't believe a word you're saying. Yeah. And then if she like looks over at somebody doing something suspicious, like audio listeners are going to have no idea, but like mm. she does this look of like such a <laughs> sus, like, you know, what's going on over there type yeah. look. It's so fun to see. And yeah, that, that was something. I can't remember if it was in one of our interviews or something else, but yeah, where they were talking about how like, um, deaf people almost see, you know, n- normal people who can hear as like normal um, people. Yeah, you know I mean. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> um, as sort of he- held back in how yeah, they express yeah. things and all that because we don't, you know, take advantage of the full range of emotions and things our face can show. So yeah, no, that's how terrible masks must be for them. Yeah, de- well, yeah, I have heard that actually. It's a big. Yeah, it makes it way harder to read people and stuff. So, mm. Mm. Yeah, just a very side note on yeah. that. 
the amount of over expressing I need to do while wearing a mask to show somebody that yeah, I'm engaged with them while definitely. I'm talking. And it's so hard to be sarcastic or not sarcastic <laughs> even, but just to like joke about anything that like could be taken seriously. Like yeah. you have to really make an effort to show, oh no, I wasn't serious about it. You like have to like rise your eyes up to make it look like you're smiling <laughs> a lot more than you actually are. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, where are we at? Um, Carol and I keep going to Jim call him Carey. The, the, the governor. He's not. Um, no one will ever be. Jim Carrey <laughs> stand in. What's his name? Uh, no, it's not Milton. That's from <laughs> <laughs> Suicide Squad. We've just been watching. It's Milton now. Um, Lance Hornsby. Hornsby. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Or as a disgruntled fisherman would call it, Mother Puss Bucket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? Uh, <laughs> Why? Actually, knowing that now I'm thinking about that Michael Cudlitz directed this episode, I feel like that could have even been one yeah. of his things because he always had the creative non-swear swear words because it, it has to pass the ratings for TV. Yeah, you know though as well how they start to like slip in these made-up words or they like they'll pull their f bombs or whatever. So mm. like they'll like discuss. Daryl has a great one where he goes and he like says mother and he like he yeah. hits Rick and so like it. <laughs> I wonder if that's their way of like tiptoeing into a bit more abrasive language so that it's not so stunning or shocking when it finally hits. Mm. I know Suits did that as well. Oh, really? Big yeah. time. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm uh, as far as I'm aware, at least that's just an AMC thing because you can see the same in Breaking Bad. Um, on the Blu-rays, I think they're extended editions of some of the episodes, so they have more swearing, but like for the TV versions, they're really strict with... There are some definite stuff. Walter White yeah. moments where he uses some language. Yeah. Um, but, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. We're going off track, but anyways, I, I think... From that what I've heard, at least that's an AMC thing. Well, yeah. one of the notes which I thought was pretty awesome, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but Hornsby is taking um, Carol along and for whatever reason, I don't know what her role is supposed to be in all of this. He yeah. says something like, it's up to you to wrangle in this guy or whatever. Yeah. And then cut to a sweeping shot of flowers. Mm, and that that's uh, a Michael Cudlitz director, like... um signature or something or right? in, in all the episodes he directs there's like a big sweeping drone shot and i don't, I don't mind it it's no, just cool not good gonna, to know but yeah i know that it, it later refers to the poppies and the, the opioids and stuff mm. like or opium yeah um but i thought that yeah flowers connected with carol is, is always oh yeah i didn't pick that up yeah, yeah. interesting <laughs> you know a lot about flowers come along <laughs> mm. yeah i have no idea why the guy got arrested or what he did or yeah so i I don't know exactly how it related to something he actually did like when they were fishing or uh, yeah i don't know it was a bit hard to understand but basically the gist i got from what carol said was that um he's been treating the workers like slaves and not paying them Uh... and he stepped too far that's why they're on strike and now he's just asking for more money and trying to blame it on the all the workers right Something like that. Okay. Yet another example of how everything is, it's just so not clear at all. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know how stupid we are supposed to be treated as a viewer. Like, I think you're supposed to lead mm. up enough clues that you can clue on and be interested in what's going on. Yeah. Because as far as plot points go, like on paper, they could be interesting, you know? Yeah, sure. Stephanie goes missing. Eugene mm. needs to go find there's some, mm. you know, illegal work going on for the stuff and they want to expose it, Connie and, and the yeah. like. But, Is, but just, like, take two steps back and look at not even the big picture, just, like, within the context of the last three episodes. Like, okay, Alexandria gets approached by this weird community mm. and then, like... An episode later, they're just, like, hanging out in the Commonwealth. And then the very next episode, now we're in the midst of some, like, mystery detective show and, like, a journalist thing. Like, what, what, what what's going on? Like, they, we've completely skipped over just, like, being introduced to the community or, like, mm. I don't know, any sense of a continuous story. Now we're just, in like, thrown into the deep end of these random, very unimportant 
like in the in the scheme of the zombie apocalypse and everything else the show has been about so far. Could you could you yeah. argue that the show has had a history of doing that just like having a good chunk of like action heavy here are the high mm. stakes episodes and then lulling into like a three or four episode. I'm trying to think but yeah. like talk about Milton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um like that whole no, thing right. and like and Andrea Andrea. Mm. Andrea, yeah, <laughs> doing her snooping around Woodbury and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. In hindsight, I think that's awesome. I think that that's yeah. exciting. You know, governor's yeah. hiding something and walking around Woodbury. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Very thrilling. But you know, does is it just a couple of episodes break from like all the action, which is just yeah. painful to watch in one episode installments? Possibly, yeah. And um, yeah, no, you make a good point and. Nothing against Woodbury, obviously, hey, hey. but uh, but I I do tend to in rewatches sometimes skip over some of that stuff just because yeah, like you said, the stories aren't all that interesting. Like they're they're fine, but they're kind of just sort of B plots. But I guess the big difference here is that you get the main story, and then that's just like a side plot, and you go to that for like five minutes at a time, and then you come back to the main story. So you always know at least where the show's heading, and um. Mm. And you get a sense, oh, maybe there's a boring side plot here and there, but it's it's all in service of a bigger picture. Whereas yep. this, like, you just wonder, like... Each side plot is boring in itself. Yeah, but, like, these are main plots and now, like, this is the main show all of a sudden, like, out of nowhere. Um, yeah, it's very strange. Keeping in mind as well, though, that we do need to wrap everything up, like the whole series is wrapping up, so rather than have a whole lot of loose ends like, oh, what happened with Eugene and Stephanie? What mm. happened with, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm. I wonder if that's our way of, you know, we sacrifice one or two episodes here to get those stories out of the way. Well, because now Eugene is meeting up with the real Stephanie, you know, on the radio. Yeah. At the end of this. Who I'm pretty sure they put out like the casting of that ages ago and yeah it was like a darker skinned lady and i'm mm. pretty sure it was the same actress so i feel like yeah that was should have seen it coming yeah <laughs> mm. i could be wrong about that but <laughs> i agree though like it, it's it feels like the things that we're supposed to find important i just really don't care about yeah and the series, but, yeah. And, and one thing, because uh, I, I get, you know, it makes sense what you're saying, not wanting to leave loose ends, but your starting whole threads with yeah. like this rogue soldier and now they're having to do a whole investigative thing to look into him. Like, why would you start things like that? I don't know. Mm. You, uh, well, you got cut to Connie here who they're talking about the militarization of the police unit mm. being a bad thing. Um, and they're following along asking Mercer a whole bunch of questions. Now, I have a side note on this. Mm. Back in the day, you had Negan coating all the weapons in zombie guts and blood oh, yeah. to make everybody sick. He's just hacked and slashed a whole bunch of um, walkers apart. Yeah. He's absolutely covered in blood. <laughs> like, is that still a thing or is it only if you get it in cuts or something? Oh, is that only cuts, actually? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I'll, I'll retract that if that's the case. But just mm. the whole hygiene thing. But still, thing. he's got it on his face. Like, you want to keep it away from your eyes and stuff. Mm. Like, yeah, I don't know. We saw maybe one of the most gross zombies I've ever seen on the show. Yeah, I think it's earlier. Yeah, I right like it was towards the start when they're on the wagon. Yeah. It didn't feel necessary to me. Like, it wasn't a... <laughs> reveal thing it was it was a transitional shot yeah it was it's just like wandering on <laughs> yeah i think it might be a bit of volume there or maybe not oh yeah yeah i've got to turn down there we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man nice. that's yuck and as far as like believable you know <laughs> i'm being very critical of this episode right <laughs> that just looks gross for the sake of gross i like it Mm. The skull is pushed so far out that, I don't know, it doesn't look like a decomposing human. It just looks like a monster. Yeah, yeah. There, there was something off about it, but like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a smaller problem in the view of the whole episode. It's something that on on a whole, usually, I'm, I praise quite a lot in this show. The, sure. the makeup department and the props and everything. Sure. So good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and look, yeah, there's the, the opium farm. There's a whole other 
plot thread that they've just started a whole mm. new thing. Um, like, yeah, why do we care about that at all? Um, and th- and that's why I'm definitely looking more forward to next week's episode because it's actually about the people of Alexandria and the h- how they're reacting, what what they're going to do, what the next step is, like what are the Commonwealth going to follow through on what they promised, all these things which are actual sort of main story threads. So, mm. yeah. I have got deliberately this hooked up to volume because yeah. uh, at one point <laughs> after... Yeah. We're going to get to the bottom of this. So let me... Could you explain uh, this? Um, so, yeah, this is when... Yeah, when you, Eugene's telling Princess... Oh, Princess is saying like, oh, she broke up with you, yeah. all this. And then he says something at the end. And I swear it was just silence. I swear he didn't even... His well, lips he said, move. He said, I'm privy to something like a piece of information yeah. that you don't know. Yeah. Like, oh, really? And then he goes... <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. All right, let's crank the volume. I want to... Uh, well, slowly, okay. though, because yeah, it might not slowly, be slowly. at the right spot here. All right. A piece of data that you are not. Okay, oh, here we go. I know how it felt. I know how it felt. Okay. Uh, okay. Fair enough. I mean, wow. It, it, for for a, a cinema movie where uh, the, we're getting technical here, but for a cinema, you design you des, you design the sound to have like high dynamic range because you're in a quiet cinema. There's no noise around, so you can hear very quiet things and you can hear loud things. But for TV, mm. those people aren't watching it on the best speakers because you know TVs. You know, you're in your house, you're in a noise environment, so you you should compress the sound a bit so you don't have to turn the volume up and down to hear everything. We, I, that literally, I couldn't hear anything. No. It, it was like the <laughs> slightest noise, I tell if you, anything. For how boring an episode it was, I've never been more captivated in my <laughs> yeah. whole life. Like, has the lip sync just gone out all of a sudden? Or like, yeah. <laughs> But true, like that's that's such a true thing as well. No matter how much people try and convince you otherwise of something, mm. they, they don't know how something felt. So yeah, fair enough. Fair, and, I, and that's the one nitpick I've had of the sound mixing from like the whole show. It's a, it's mm. pretty good usually. Mm. <laughs> I, I called it straight away with the falsified documents as far as oh look you know Ronan. Calhoun. Oh, I can't believe I remember that. <laughs> nice. You know, oh, look, here's a plumber. Here's the receipts. Here's the invoice. I was like, you just made all those yeah. up. You just, Totally. And then so all leading up to a pretty big acting moment from Eugene. How did that, how what do you reckon? His like manic episode mm. here. Um. I'll try and get this still here as well because there's, <laughs> one, there's one shot of um, whatever his name, Hornsby. Where he's standing there, and I swear, like frame for frame, he's absolutely Jim Carrey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, the the acting was was fine. Nothing bad to say about it. It's just, yeah, I just didn't care at all. <laughs> That's True, all I can say really. Yeah, he's going on about how betrayed he feels and how he's been lied to, and we're like, well, duh. Like that's. Yeah. I mean, it sucks for you, but we we know that now, so we can move past it. It would be more like. Ah, uh, I don't know. Think of think of the in- interaction between like Rick and Shane way back in the day mm. when you know they they're about to kill one another. Like that's a feels like a way bigger betrayal than yeah, you know, yeah. As far as something that we care about, for sure, definitely. And I mean, it it does make actually. I'm more connected to the Eugene stuff because we at least did have you know a whole chunk of episodes focused on them integrating into the commonwealth but it was much more engaging oh there's the jim carrey shot is can, can you please screenshot that and like send it you, it doesn't let you in this app it just makes it black because it's copyrighted oh, i gotta take a picture yeah take, well, take a picture okay, yeah, uh, take I'm, it on my phone i'm gonna i'm gonna lose it but like okay. look at that it really does look like him i'll post this on instagram or something okay does jim carrey have a brother that we don't know about maybe there we go. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so so with regards to like all, all this stuff, th- this makes sense kind of to have in there. W- uh, what I'm getting at is you're, you're meeting this whole new community and okay, they let you in. 
but you're still kind of skeptical. Like, is it everything you were promised? Is, is Stephanie real? This random person you met over the radio? Like, yeah. And so, like, if if you took this a few steps back, then it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that, this is kind of. I don't know. It, I, it's just the fact that we've skipped to like a few months in, and everyone's just living normally. We've just completely accepted this community, and now, now there's a mystery, and then it's been. Yeah, like the noir detective thing. It's just so, yeah, jumping all over the place. As far as things that you do have to kind of hand it to them, as far as like Hornsby's concerned and everything, Mm. he has this whole speech here about like, do you think we were idiots? Like, of course. I liked his speech. Yeah, yeah. like, you know, you lied to us at at every single turn (laughs) and you're like, you're being cautious because you think that we're the bad guys, but for all we know, you guys are the bad guys. So like, and like... I, I pretty much fully agreed with everything he said. I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like everyone has benefited from these yeah. things. And, of course, I had to plant someone, you know, close to you to find out who you really are for yeah. the safety of everyone. Like I'm not, you know, some vindictive guy who draws pleasure from doing all of this. Like, for sure. So, yeah, I didn't walk away from this shaking my hand at Hornsby going, oh, like we'll <laughs> get you next time. Yeah. It's like it makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's what like I kind of felt like. Oh, we're supposed to like feel enraged and hate this guy now. I just I agreed with everything he said. Mm. <laughs> a cool little, uh, not cliche. Um, what do you call it? Not quite a, a sim symbol thing. Yeah. No Meta- symbol. Metaphor. I don't know. Well, I call it that maybe. The fact that, you know, sometimes when the truth hits you about something, it can knock the wind out of you. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> the fact that, yeah, Stephanie actually knocks the wind out of him and that's yeah. like, yeah. Solid. Yeah. yeah. Man, that hurts. You go, you really go down. You can't move. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, look, like it just completely tunnel vision looking at just this episode, forgetting about the rest of the show. Like, yeah, I feel bad for Eugene and stuff like that, like, um, to lose that. But, yeah, <laughs> but it's just so weird. It's just, yeah. I think I back know. in the day when we finally, when we first met who we thought was Stephanie, we were saying, mm. oh, we hope she's legit, that this is all mm. real. Like, Eugene could really use a break. He's had bad luck all up until now, Yeah, you know, and all of that. So for them to still go ahead and do that, I don't know. Mm. I I 100% think that this actual Stephanie lady is going to be part of the resistance or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Mm. That'd be cool. Yeah. Mm. (laughs) So many questions still, though. Like, yeah, is she... Why why did she randomly come up to him at the end? Does she know? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was having a, a chat on our Star Wars podcast, Astromech, with mm. a guy, and he. But one of the points he made is sometimes you just have to accept that the plot has to happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, absolutely. You, you can't be nip. Oh, how does she know where to find him at that hour of the night? Like, sometimes just the plot happens, you know, <laughs> whatever it was. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, it can only get better from here, right? Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like to me, for me, it's honestly not even a question at all that this is like the worst episode of the whole show Damn. so far. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Like, are there others that come close, or or does it just to you not feel that bad? I haven't seen maybe some of the previous seasons in a long time, so sure, I, yeah. I can't remember. I was dead bored watching yeah. this. <laughs> Hard to say that it's the worst from memory. Yes, right. I agree with you. Mm. Like. It's the walking dead. Don't just yeah. have like one or two walkers straggle along as like a transitional shot where you stab mm. one and then that's it. Like, you know, it's about the group surviving the apocalypse yeah. against the walkers, right? Yeah. The minute it was against other humans, I I, I started I mean, to taper off. that's always kind of been a, a part of it, but it's got to be then like it's interesting when you're fighting other humans because they've been driven to this point by the world. And, and so the, the apocalypse and the zombies are always a part of the story, even if they're not the villain you're actually facing at the moment. It, it's all kind of mm. caused by the world that you're living in. But now that we're just in like a normal world dealing with newspapers, mm. <laughs> like mm. it's, yeah, it's not even close. 
like for all intents and purposes, like I absolutely agree. I, <laughs> it may as well have been like, oh, who stole the town? Uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of an item that the town would cherish. Flag. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> who stole the town flag or who defaced the monument? Yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> the monument. And, and like there's a whole episode dedicated to that. I, I, yeah. I don't know. It feels, yeah, just as important as anything like that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Like internal struggles that's got nothing to do with the out, the broader picture, like you were saying. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I guess all, all I can, all we can really hope is that this is sort of it just, like filler because they had to have this many episodes and they've, they do have a story they want to tell, but they had to fill out the episodes um, just to be able to get to it, like, that, that's my most optimistic version of it is this was literally just a throwaway. We've got to fill the numbers, but um, we do have a story to get to <laughs> eventually. <laughs> yeah. If I could make one other point on Connie, mm. it seems such a shame to see her in this, like, you know, no one likes the press. They're just yeah. this annoying bug that, like, <laughs> flies around and yeah. sticks their nose where they shouldn't and, like, just becomes this pest. Mm. With Connie being deaf in particular there is a potential which we've seen in other episodes, like with her in like the cornfield or whatever, where like yeah. there's all of this, it's chilling. Mm. And like in that house with all of the people yeah. where her disability that way makes it really scary for us because it's like in any corner there could be yeah. a walker. And so there is that potential to add a thrilling note in this, um, you know, in this series to make it a little bit scary from time to time. Mm. And I feel like her potential is wasted being a an annoying journalist who no one likes yeah you know even and even if she is feisty if i may just finish yeah, even, sure. even if she is you know trying to get to the bottom of some you know <laughs> yeah. conspiracy it just i don't know if it's the right fit no yeah not at all <laughs> yeah. um yeah I, this is uh, i'm not saying they should have done this at all this is like the most predictable cliche thing you could possibly do probably but <laughs> excuse me to have like I don't know, just have her deaf be contribute to it in any way. Like there's someone who she's trying to interview and they know that they she can't hear what they're saying so they go off and mumble something that like gives them away to someone else but she can't hear it and so we as the audience know but she doesn't know. I, I don't yeah, know, just anything yeah. that would, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But then at the same time, I'm thinking out loud here, it's yeah, kind of good yeah. not to treat people with a disability as disabled, like just give them a normal story arc, treat them as if they're just just like everyone else. So True, yeah. but the big thing that this whole show hinges on, right, is that there are dead people walking around. <laughs> yeah. And so like if you have any sort of disability that hinders your survivability, mm. so that's a word. Yeah. Um, probably not <laughs> to to the undead like i think that that's something that should be present oh of course yeah well yeah that that but gets could... back to the bigger picture of that the undead should be present <laughs> in yeah. a show called the walking dead yeah um, and not just like in a random sequence of two people who we have no idea who they are fighting zombies for like 30 seconds mm. um mm. Yeah. but in the broader picture of things as well like Oh, where am I going with this? Um, I think the showrunners are asking the same question to themselves. <laughs> where am I going with this? Um, no. Um, as we start to move towards the final episodes, I know yeah. it's a good, like, what did you say? Like, Yeah, oh, like 14 left, something like that. Maybe there exists a timeline where we see fewer and fewer walkers because they are yeah. getting either pushed away or taken down. So mm. maybe by the end of the show, they've got a handle on it. Yeah. Until you have another one of those stupid picnic situations. I forget what. <laughs> with that little girls like playing in the mud or something. Oh, yeah, and then that's one right. Yeah. Comes up. What, what season it's, is that? Well, that's the lady who the governor falls in love with and he pretty much adopts her as his daughter. Ah. The girl. Um, season four, episode eight. There you go. Too far gone, if you'd eight. like to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's all off the top of his head, ladies and <laughs> It's crazy. But yeah, that's that's the crazy thing. Like, even if you yeah, did eradicate yeah. them all, it just takes one stupid thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I guess um, 
I mean, I, I, I do get that. that it's, it's hard to come up with something new at this point in the show because, you know, most of the situations have already been explored. But, um, but it's definitely sort of at the point now where, like, I would take just a rehash of Alexandria when they first arrived and they were getting interviewed and they didn't know whether or not to trust people. Like, uh, even if it was a complete rehash of that with the Commonwealth, I would take that over a detective journalist story. To be fair, though, like... I mean, yeah, you, you say we're opening all these new threads and it might be difficult to come up with new stuff, but, like, mm. how about answering some of the questions that have been bugging us, like, right from the start with these stupid helicopters, you know? Where where has Rick mm. been taken? What's an A? What's a B? Where is, you know... Yeah. How does the CRM tie into things, like, you know? Yeah, and obviously we can only speculate with regards to the Rick movies, but, like, I don't know. If, let, let's say you're Scott Gimple overseeing this whole thing Okay, the Rick movies have been delayed heaps. No one really cares about them anymore. Everyone's kind of forgotten I beg about to them. Differ. Well, well, yeah, people have big head. But there's not the same sort of hype that there once was. People have, a lot of people have forgotten about them. Mm. And we've got the last season of the show, which is a big deal, and we're kind of struggling with story ideas. Why don't we just take what we've got for Rick and integrate it into the last season of the show? I don't know. Mm. Like. A- anything at this point. <laughs> mm. Yeah. He's not still any way he's, involved, is he? Yeah, he's the chief content officer is the name. So he oversees the whole universe and all the... The whole universe. <laughs> <laughs> the Walking Dead universe. So all the spin-off shows, all the... Mo- he sort of oversees it all and makes sure that it all meshes together well, but he's not writing for the individual shows. Right. Right. Oh, man. Oh, that's an interview. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's an interview right there. Mm. Scotty G. Scotty G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, there'll be, yeah, definitely all that helicopter stuff is something. Yeah. Hard mm. to stretch out this episode much. Yeah, very. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Is there anything else just the show overall that you want to talk about? Um, doesn't have to be. I I had something earlier on. I was I was having a rethink about season four, mm. um, but no. Yeah. No, fair enough. Um, yeah. And now I'm just trying to think of other like um, side plots or or kind of filler episodes, but that were sort of maybe more interesting at least. I don't know. Oh, here's one for you. Yeah. So. Uh, two episodes ago, we had Negan just go off into the distance, right? Yeah, yeah. How are you going to have episodes like this when you've got the potential <laughs> of Negan somewhere? Yeah. You know? It, it just has to be, like, I mean, obviously I'm just guessing, but uh, I would be, I, th- I would put money on the fact that it's just because there's a contract, he, they're only going to pay him this much because they've got this much budget and he can only be in so many episodes in the season, so they have to just get rid of him for a while because uh, they can't afford to pay the actor. That's that's all I can really mm. guess at because, like, if you had any big draw cards left to keep people watching, he was definitely one of them, and to get rid of him. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were excited to see Connie back. I think when, the, when oh, she was for gone sure. for a while, there was, there yeah. was that. Mm. But surely at the moment you got Daryl, you know? Yeah. Probably Maggie and then maybe Aaron. Mm. Yeah. And and all the, you know, Eugene, Connie, all, all these characters we're seeing, I love the characters, but like, yeah, if, you know, if you have the best character in the world sitting, staring, watching paint dry on a wall, mm. it's not going to be an interesting show. So you have to give them something interesting to do. Um, yeah. Mm. One final thought then on that. Do you remember the conversation that Rick was having with Negan when uh, Negan was in his cell? I Mm. think this was the beginning of season... Nine. Okay. (laughs) Um, And he says something along the lines of like, you know, it's it's a different world to when you last saw it or something. And then Negan just says, you're getting it ready for me. Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon that that was still just cocky Negan talking who wasn't, you know, in any way reformed or or was there actually something behind that? Right. 
Because I part of me wonders whether you know, obviously his his ways are changing, yeah. and we can see that he wants different things. But I wonder if inside him is still this sense of like, this is my playground, you mm. know? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do feel like there's still part of him. Yeah, there. Hey, he, I I don't think he's completely changed, and, and that we've. We've seen even, you know, stuff like when he talks to Maggie and says, yeah, I would have done it differently. I would have killed you all. <laughs> like, yeah, he's he's not just completely saying, oh, I was wrong. I, yeah. Um, f- like, please forgive me. He's, he's still, you know, pretty cocky and just, mm. hey, I'm who I am. You can, you know, you can have me or not. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Um uh, yeah, because that was before the big six-year time skip, so True. I feel like he was still, yeah, very much old Negan mm. for a bit there. Um, I do miss yeah. that. I, I, yeah. Mm, for sure. Much though a lot of you didn't like season eight, I think. Oh, sorry, season... Yeah. The, the war one? Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it's just because it was dragged out for too long. Um, but, like, yeah... I mean, over this especially, but like, yeah, mm. it's not a terrible season, really. Mm. Um, it's just sort of, yeah, probably eight episodes worth dragged out into sixteen episodes, and so that's why it kind of feels a bit um, of a letdown in, in some parts. But yeah. Mm. Uh, last note that I have um, on this episode, and then that'll probably be it from me. Sure. Um, when you've got Eugene and Princess uh, searching in. Roman Callahoons. That's the best name. That's the best thing to come out of this episode. <laughs> uh, in his quarters, um, you got like this fisheye lens perspective right from the corner. Yeah, yeah. Almost looks like not quite a security cam, but mm. it definitely the 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 newer type, you know, style. Yeah. I've I've pointed this out before, and the, they've been using the lens quite a lot this season. Um, this sort of really wide angle anamorphic lens, um, mm. but like it, it's only really obvious in shots like that where people are coming out close to the camera, particularly when they reach their arms out or something, because um, it makes your limbs look really long or anything if it gets warped towards the edge. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean I I don't mind it. Um, as far as you know, just trying out new ways to um, make the show look a bit different. But yeah, there's definitely some times, and it's probably just because of you know TV time and stuff like that. You you have to do pretty quick setups when you're filming. Um, maybe in hindsight they would have used a different lens for that specific shot. But uh, yeah, it just looks a bit weird once in a while. Mm. 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 But yeah, I mean. Wow, worst wow. episode, hey? <laughs> yeah. Worst episode ever. What's that from? Is that from The Simpsons? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, th- that's probably the big thing last point. It's just the sense of where where's this going. Like with Oceanside, a lot of people um, sort of for a while rated that as the worst episode. Um, Tara just mm. hanging out there. And it was an extended one as well, I think. So it was oh. like, yeah, a, a lot of people didn't like that one. And I get it. It makes sense. But at least at the end of the day, you know that it's that's going to come back and it's building towards something that is going to contribute to the war and it's going to be... It, it's going to go somewhere interesting and take the main characters somewhere. But this just doesn't seem interesting at all. <laughs> Mm. Um, yeah, so that's really the big thing, I guess. Hey, I haven't thought about Tara in a long time. Yeah, don't really miss her to be. Yeah, <laughs> fair way. enough. Yeah, yeah, it was the sort of thing she sort of had some ups and downs, and when when she had something to do, she was quite a good character. But my, she my, was just kind of in the background a lot. My favorite line from her, like, "You don't get to switch sides and make it okay." Like, <laughs> You mean yeah. exactly like you did? Yeah, yeah, there is that. Huh. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Mm. There we go. But um but yeah, no, definitely um I don't know. Just holding on to the it's still the production value, the the look of it. Um I, I'm enjoying Yeah. It, like it, it's kind of weird, but actually, oh, here's a good comparison, because I'm watching this um show that Ben Stiller's directed uh, that's on Apple TV at the moment. Um, 
and it's got uh, the guy from Parks and Rec in it. I can't remember his name now. Adam Scott, I think, is the actor. Okay. Um, and because uh, Walter Mitty is one of my favourite movies and that was directed by Ben Stiller as well and uses a lot of the same crew. So it's I'm not in love with this new series, but it's just kind of cool watching something made by um, the same people who made something else you really like and just seeing them do something else creative. And mm. that's what this kind of feels like. It's like, oh, I don't really like this, but it's got all these actors I really like in it and the people making it, um, I, I really like the work they do. So it's at least enjoyable in that sense that was going to be a question of mine to you obviously being a big fan of the show i wondered whether you're not you know with these episodes that come along disappointing though they are Mm. whether you're sitting there actually feeling you know even sad (laughs) you know that the show you like these sorts of things are happening or whether it's just a bit of a ah it didn't work move on type thing yeah i mean maybe if this was like a year ago i would have felt more sad about it i don't know just just where i'm at in life i've got Mm. lots of other exciting things going on that i'm probably more emotionally invested in than the show at the moment so that definitely helps Mm. um yeah i mean it is definitely a shame but at at the moment where i'm at just in life in general is i'm like oh well i'm happy that you know we've had the show up until this point that i've really enjoyed and, and hopefully it goes somewhere better and gets interesting by the end, but you know, it is just a TV show at the end of the day. So just got to have a bit of fun with it and move on with the rest of your life. eh? There you go. Yeah. Oh, and one other thing, just by comparison, uh, Abraham, uh, what was his actor's name? Uh, Michael Cudlitz. What other episodes has he done that might be notable? One that I don't think you actually watched. um, It was called Stradivarius, which was, the first, oh no, it was the second one after the six year time skip. The Michonne episode? No, it, there was another one. It actually had Luke in it a fair bit. So no. it, it, it was kind of a filler episode, but it was all right. It was pretty good. Okay. Um, and then, um, oh, what's the other one? Now I'm forgetting, but mm. yeah, he did do another one. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was one of my favorite ones. Um, the Silence the Whisperers where... Um, Negan saves Lydia from getting beat up and then Daryl's like going and talking to everyone and I don't know. I really like that episode. So, there you go. Yeah. yeah. All right then. <laughs> there we go. Do we get much in the way of emails these days, Ben? I don't think so, but if you're listening and you'd like to change that, then uh, head to turn, email turnsounds at gmail.com. Is that That's right? It. Yeah. Yep. Or head to turnsounds.com and there's a contact us page or you can just... Uh, Reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook. So Facebook is Turn Sounds and Instagram. We have a page for Just Keep Walking podcasts. Mm. So either of those. And uh, yeah, definitely keen to hear your guys' thoughts. And uh, and I'm very open. Like uh, I was talking to my brother the other day after watching Star Wars Episode Nine, um, and I don't really like it, but he enjoyed it a lot more than me. So sometimes I'm like, oh, am I just being like a grumpy old man here? Yeah. Like maybe I'm just thinking about it too much and I should just enjoy it. So I'm definitely open to that. And if you have things that you really are enjoying about these episodes that you think we're missing, then then I'm very open to having my mind changed. So, and and yeah. all too often people come in here with like perspectives that we never even considered. Yeah, definitely. And it's just so fulfilling for us, like, a, you know, just having these conversations and then people are going, oh, have you thought about this? And then it, it might even change, Yeah, oh, I don't know, that the whole episode, but <laughs> sure, it, yeah. it changed some things for us. Yeah, and I'll give a plug to um, Squawking Dead as well. I haven't um, listened to their coverage yet of these episodes. They usually post them a few days later. But, um, but yeah, I'm definitely keen to hear their coverage because they, they usually sort of do, dive very deeply into the the episode and and take it uh, like we we look at it from the sense of it's a tv show and there's people who made it and stuff and and they do as well obviously but they dive more into okay th- what makes sense within the universe and mm. what's actually happening in the episode as opposed to the writers are being lazy this <laughs> week <laughs> you know right. so so they they definitely bring a different perspective that i always like to to hear so i'm keen to hear what they have to say about these ones so yeah there we go Um, But yeah, for now, I think that's it. So I've been Ben. I'm still Isaac. And we will catch you next week and uh, hopefully with Liam as well. And we will all be just keeping on walking. (laughs) That was a terrible outro. (laughs)